Good morning, Calvary Baptist Church. I hope that you're doing well today. And, uh, you know, we're, we're continuing our study today in the book of Acts. In fact, I believe we're going to be finishing it up today. Um, is, is There's still a lot in Acts, but I want us to start looking at it's some of the things that, that Paul was, was preaching and he was, he was sharing with people as we, we continue to look at, at who we are as Christians and in our mission today. Um, but, but there is another sermon that I want us to get out of the book of Acts. And uh, so I'm calling today's sermon to the work. And uh, so we're going to be taking a look at that. But, but uh, as we get started, I, I want us to uh, start with prayer. Uh, know that we want to continue to uh, keep people in prayer. Uh, we want to continue to keep uh, Bob Womner in prayer as uh, he was tested for COVID this, this past week. Um, but he Tested negative, um, but he is going to be going in for some other testings, trying to figure out what's going on with him. So he is uh, very sick, and so please keep him in prayer. Um, also, the the good news is uh, Gladys and and Ricky were were cleared from their quarantine when he tested negative. So they uh, will hopefully be joining us uh, back this week, and uh, so we're looking for that uh, forward to that. Um, we do want to continue to remember uh, Shelly in prayer. As, uh, I had not heard an update, but it looks like they were going to remove her from life support. Um, so she had been here at Calvary um, about a year ago, and her and her daughter were, were here for probably about four to six months, something like that, um, for a while. Um, and so we want to uh, continue to remember her and, and Angel in prayer especially. Um, and so we just want to uh, put that in the Lord's hands. Um, so we just want to ask the uh, Lord to take care of that situation. Um, and I know that there's uh, many other prayer requests and, and things that are on our hearts and minds that we want to uh, just continue to keep in, in uh, the Lord's hands. And so we want to put those things in his, his care. And uh, we, we are so thankful that, that he says that he will take care of those things and, and let his will be done. So as uh, we get started, uh, let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer, and then we will get to um, our sermon today, uh, to the work. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to be in your house today, Lord. As, as some of us are, are watching online, some of us are watching this later on because we couldn't get a chance to, to be at church today. And so, Lord, uh, wherever you, you find us, Lord, Help us to, to understand the, the plan and purpose you have for us. Lord, help us to uh, just bring these things that are on our hearts and minds to you. Uh, Lord, we, we ask that you just uh, be with uh, Shelly and her family. And Lord, we just um, pray that, that you would just uh, let your will be done in that situation. Uh, Lord, we also pray that you just, uh, Lord, uh, continue to, to be with those who are not able to be here at church, whether it's uh, due to work or or other is issues or situations, Lord, we just pray your will be done. Lord, uh, we thank you for all that you've done for us, that how you guide, lead, and direct us. Lord, we just pray that uh, you just uh, be with us as we look at your word this morning, and we pray that your will be done in this and all the prayer requests and all the things that's in our heart and mind. And Lord, we thank you and praise you for all these things. In your holy name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Well, as I was saying, uh, we're, we're going to be looking at um, what I'm titling to the work. And so we're going to be looking at, um, you know, Paul in, in his second missionary journey as, as we continue on. And this sort of links back to uh, our, our um, look at it last week. Um, and so we're going to be starting in Acts chapter 17. But I wonder, do you ever get the feeling that you're sort of running in circles, that you're you're doing the same thing over and over again, or you're you're trying something but it doesn't seem like you're being very successful? You know, it, it can it can be very frustrating. And and you know, as we look today, as we look at uh, what happens to uh, Paul and and Silas as they continue to try to share the word in in Europe, um, you know, they they run into very similar circumstances to what they had previously. And, and it just continued to be a problem where they would, they would go and they would share and, and the Jews would get jealous and they would, you know, start a little mob and riot to, to try to get them either arrested or taken out of the city or, or worse. And, and, you know, it had to be incredibly frustrating to, to Paul and, and Silas, Timothy, 
uh, is is they were constantly being berated all the time um, by people who were in opposition to the work that they were doing for the Lord. And, and so, you know, I wonder how frustrating it had to be for them to to want to go and share this this wonderful news of what who Jesus was, what he came to do, the the good news of what was going on, and to constantly have, you know, enemies opposing them. And so we're going to take a look at that. And and you know, I got a quote here from from Billy Graham because you know you would think, you know, Billy Graham had to be if if not the most successful, one of the most successful evangelists in history. Um, he with through the, the invention of technology, television, that sort of thing, radio. He he got to preach to millions of people. Now Paul was very prolific, and and you know as he was able to talk to to thousands upon thousands of people, he went to all over the the. But if you you know I mean, here's Billy Graham. He's talking to millions. And as we look at this, you know, here's a quote that he says. It says the Christian life is not a consistent high. I have my moments of deep discouragement. I have to go to God in prayer with tears in my eyes and say, Oh God, forgive me or help me. And you know, as someone who, who was able to, to go and share the word and, and be as, as on mission as Billy was during his life, um, would say something like that. You know, we're definitely going to have those moments where we're, we're feeling like, is what I'm doing worthwhile? It is, you know, I feel like I'm I'm running in a hamster wheel, and and we all have those moments. And and I, as we look at this, I want us to see, you know, I want us to see what Paul was his struggles, but I also want to see from from an outsider looking in that that he was being successful. He was getting the word out, and you know, when we're in the midst of things and things aren't going the way we hoped they would, sometimes we get depressed and 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 we think that we're not getting anything accomplished when when the truth is is we are we truly are making uh, a strives for the kingdom but it just may not be going the way we expect and and the the truth of the matter is is it's not the results that we're responsible for it's the going and the telling and so let's let's take a look at this so let's go ahead acts chapter 17 we're going to be in verse 1 through 5 and it says, now when they had passed through uh, Amphip Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, and there was a synagogue of the Jews. Then, then Paul, as his custom was, went unto them, and for three Sabbaths reasoned with them from the Scriptures, explaining and demonstrating that Christ had to suffer and rise again from the dead, and saying, This Jesus who I preach to you is a Christ. And some of them were persuaded, and a great multitude of devout Greeks and not a few of the leading women joined Paul and Silas. But the Jews who were not persuaded uh, became envious, took some of the evil men from the marketplace, and gathered a mob, uh, setting all the city in an uproar, and attacked the house of Jason, and sought to bring them out uh, to the people. And so, you know, here's Paul and Silas, and, and they, they preach, and, and, you know, they, they do have some people that, that come in, and, you know, there was some of the, the Jews, but, you know, there was a large number of the Greeks and some of the prominent women. And, but, but you know, the rest of the Jews, they, they became, once again, they became jealous that here, here's this guy telling, you know, the Greeks that they can, they can be believers. And, and, you know, they, so they, they went to these horrible, detestable people. It says that they went and, and, uh, took some of the evil men from the marketplace and gathered a mob and, and put the city in an uproar. And so they went to where where Paul and, and Silas were staying at the house of Jason. And and basically they dragged Jason and some of the brethren um, out of the house. And, and we're going to see what happens to them. But, but I mean, I wonder how tired of this they had to be. You know, as they would go into a town and they would share the good news of Jesus and, and then have somebody constantly come and and you know because of their jealousy their own rage they would they would come in and, and there'd be riots started it's kind of sad but it seems similar to the condition we're seeing in our world today is is you know there was another police shooting in in Washington DC there was a a gentleman who 
who the, pulled a gun on the police officers and in the the shooting happened on a Wednesday and there was there was already protests and and people you know out in the streets and calling for the police to be defunded and all this sort of stuff and literally the next day on Thursday they published the body cam footage and the guy was was drawing on the police officers and and you know we have people that that are so ready to to rush to judgment and rush to hate and anger and it just seems like anytime there's a shooting if it, if it's got to deal with any person of color it, it's just immediately people are in the streets protesting when sometimes they're protesting against criminals that that it's sad that they were shot but you know that that were being criminals and so, you know, we, we've got such rage. And so it, it seems like we, we might be able to identify with this a little bit. But as I said, you know, they went to Jason's house. Now, Jason um, looks like he was the person that had uh, been allowing Paul and Silas to stay with him. And, and we see what happens here as we get to verse 6. It says... Um, We go, uh, but when they did not find them, they dragged Jason, and some of the brethren, to the rulers of the city, crying out, uh, "These who have turned the world upside down have come here too." Jason has harbored them, and they and they these are acting contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying, "There's another king, Jesus." And they troubled the crowd and the rulers of the city. And they heard these things, so when they had taken a security from Jason and the rest, they let them go. And and so basically, you know, they they blamed everything on Jason that he was he was harboring these these horrible fugitives that were were standing against Caesar and you know the Jews didn't care a thing about Caesar in fact they they you know if you really truly asked them they probably wish Caesar would just go away or or die or something else because they seen him as the enemy but but because they hated Paul even worse they they were saying oh yeah they they're standing against Caesar how dare that you know just convenience but as we see jason and and they were they were basically you know extorted of money to pay for their own release you know it was it was sort of like paying a jail bond and so you know it was kind of a situation where where paul and silas became persons non grata there in in thessalonica and they were going to have to leave or, or face worse punishment or or even jason and the rest of the brethren would would face pu punishment and so they, they, they ended up letting them go. Um, and so that, that night, it says, as we get to verse 10, it says, Then, then the brethren re immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. And so, you know, once again, because of, of the Jews' jealousy to, to Paul and, and the crowds that he would bring and the people that were listening to him, he, he was he was kicked out of a city before he really even got started. Now, we're, we're, we know and we're thankful, you know, that we, we have the book of, of Thessalonians, and we know that the church in Thessalonica uh, became founded, it grew, it, it, it developed, um, and, and so Paul is able to write to them later. But, you know, uh, I wonder how frustrating it had to be once again to be removed from a city before he even really got started. And so here's here's Paul and Silas, and now they're in, in the, the town of Berea. And, and Berea is going to have a completely different reaction to the message of Paul and Silas. In fact, this is this is a, a message, this is a situation that I, I, I hope that we at Calvary would do as well. And so let's continue on. Uh, verse 10, let's go through that again. It says, Then the brother immediately sent Paul and Silas away by, by night to, into Berea, and when they arrived, they went to the synagogue of the Jews. These were more fair-minded than those of Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. Therefore, many of them believed, and not a few of the Greeks, prominent women as well as men. Um, and so the Bereans, they, they had a completely different view. They, they listened to what Paul said, and then they searched the scriptures diligently to see if what he said was true. And, you know, this is why I... I, I ask and I tell people, you know, um, when I'm reading a different translation or something, I, I let them know and say, hey, I'm reading out of this translation. Or, you know, I, I want you to follow along in your your Bible with me because, you know, I'm human. 
And it, it is better for you to go and check and, and read what I'm reading and see what and see if you agree. See if you're seeing the same things I am. If if the Lord is telling you what, what he's been telling me. Because, you know, I, I'm human. I can make mistakes. I'm not perfect. And, and so, you know, no one should ever get and let another human being be their ultimate source of truth in the scripture. We should read the scripture for ourselves. You know, that's why we are so blessed living in the era that we are today. We have access to the scripture in, in any number of ways. I mean, if you don't have a Bible at home, if you have a computer and access to the internet, you have almost every, if not every translation of the Bible in almost every language available to you for free. I mean, can you imagine? You you go on and you look up Bible verses or you, and you usually get to, you know, different different Bible apps and, and they, they have all the different translations and you can read God's word. We have the ability to read God's word for ourselves in so many different ways. And so what, a, what an awesome time that is that we can go and we can diligently seek out the, the Bible and what it says. And so is, is, you know, Paul had to, it had to be slightly encouraging to him to see these people, you know, listen to him and then seek out the, in the scripture, is this true? Is this right? And, and, you know, many of the people came to know uh, the Lord because they, they looked and they said, yes, this is true. What Paul is saying is, is real. It's accurate. And so the Bereans, you know, were, were, were great. But, you know, as we, we look, you know, the people, the mobs from Thessalonica are going to end up coming and, and, and destroying his ministry there. And, you know, this is multiple times this has happened in, in Paul's ministry as, as, you know, groups from, from uh, different areas would come and find out he was somewhere else and they would, they would travel the distance just to go and to stir up trouble for him. You know, when we, when we looked at, um, this, the, when they were in, uh, 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 lit, uh, let's see, what was it? Uh, hold on. Let me get the correct name of the town here as we were looking. Um, they, it was the people from Iconum that came, but they were going to, let me see, uh, do, 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 Lystra. Yes. I want to, I want to, is we have, we just studied Lydia and I was, Wanted to make sure I got the right name of the city. So Lystra. So so when they were in Lystra, the people from I Iconum came and gave him grief. And so now the people from Thessalonica are going to come and give Paul grief there in, in Berea. And so we see that in starting in verse 13. And it says, uh, But when the Jews from Thessalonica learned that the word of God was preached by Paul at Berea, they came there also and stirred up the crowds. Then immediately the brethren sent Paul away to go to the sea, but both Silas and Timothy remained there. So those who conducted Paul brought him to Athens, receiving a command for Silas and Timothy to come to him with all speed, they departed. And so, you know, basically they, they wanted to get Paul out of there quickly as possible because once again, these people were out for blood. They, they wanted to see, you know, Paul thrown in prison or, or worse. And so, you know, Silas and Timothy were sort of able to melt in the crowd. They, they ended up staying there in, in, in the Macedonian area and, and continued to minister in various places. But, but here's, here's Paul, and he's taken to Athens. I mean, this is Athens, Greece. This is the place that, you know, we, we hear about and all the mythology and all the legends and all this sort of stuff. This was the center of Greek culture, and this was a huge city. It wasn't as great as it was in, in the height of its, of its time, but, but still a, a center of culture and all this. And so Paul is there all by himself. He is, he's in probably one of the most pagan, heavily influenced uh, by other gods and religions area in the entire world. And he's there by himself. But, you know, he doesn't sit there and hide. He goes right back to, to what he's always done. And, and he goes to, to share the good news. And so, you know, it had to be frustrating to him as he was, he was taken by ship, you know, hundreds and hundreds of miles away to, to get to Athens as, as, you know, once again, another ministry that, that probably felt like it was, it was taken away too quick is, 
is the Bereans were coming to know the Lord and they were, he, he reasoned and they were searching the scriptures diligently. And so let's see what happens in, in, uh, with, with Paul there in Athens. And so we're going to be in verse 16 in chapter 17. And God's word tells us this. It says, Now while Paul waited for them in Athens, his spirit was provoked within him when he saw that the city was given over to idols. I mean, you, you think of ancient Greece and you think of, of Athens. I mean, there was temples to all the various Greek gods everywhere in Athens. Um, you know, he would have probably seen statues of their patron goddess Athena all over the place. You know, and, and just all this stuff. And so he, he it stirred within him that, you know, seeing these people follow after these false gods and it, it broke his heart. It says, verse 17, Therefore he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and with the Gentile worshipers in the marketplace daily with those who happened to be there. So he went and he was preaching anywhere that the people would stop and listen to him. Then certain Epicurean and Stoic philosophers encountered him, and they said, What does this babbler want to say? Others said he seems to proclaim, uh, be a proclaimer of foreign gods because he preaches to them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him to the Agropolis, saying, May we know what this new doctrine is of what you speak, for we, they, you are bringing some strange ideas uh, to our ears. Therefore, we want to know what these things mean. For all the Athenians and foreigners who were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear something new. And, and so as, as we look here, it says that they, he encountered some Epicurean and Stoic philosophers. And these these people were 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 completely on opposite ends of the spectrum. They were they were completely opposite of each other. You know, Stoics were, you know, basically we endure life, you know, trials and tribulations is just we just are 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 enduring all the, the hardships of life. And the Epicureans were very hedonistic. They were into pleasure and the finer things of life and and all this. And so these were completely opposite people, but they they saw and heard, you know, them preaching Jesus and resurrection. They they thought these ideas were strange. And so they brought them to some of their, their bigger thinkers, the, the ones that were leaders of the city there in, in the Agropolis, to, to basically give an account of what he was saying. It's not that he was on trial, but they were, they they wanted to hear something new. That this this was what the Athenians were known for. Were constantly looking for the newest philosophy, the newest thought, the newest idea. And so what Paul said was 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 unusual to them. It was something that they weren't really prepared for. And so he want they wanted him to to go up there to the Agropolis and to to share what he was he was speaking on. And so you know as we. We think about this, you know, the Agropolis is, is one of the, the places, if you go to Athens today, I mean, it's in ruins, but you can still visit this place to, today and see the place that, that Paul walked and he was, he was sharing the gospel there in Greece. And so let's see what happens as, as Paul um, shares with them in the Agropolis, because he's going to share the Lord in a way that he hasn't shared before. Because he realizes he's talking to people that are they're of Greek mindset. They do not understand or know God, the creator God of the Jews. Um, they do not know God the Father. Um, so he had no common ground to start with. So he's he's going and he's, he's showing them God from what evidence that they have in front of them. And so let's see what he, what he does here. Then Paul stood in the midst of the Agropolis and said, Men of Athens, I perceive in all things you are very religious. For as I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. Therefore the one whom you worship without knowing him, I will proclaim to you God who made the world and everything in it. Since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything. Since he gives to all life, breath, and all things, and he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth, and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings, so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for him. <clears throat> grope for him. Uh, pardon me, lost my spot there. And find him, though he is not far from each of us. 
Uh, for in him we live and move and have our being, as some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought to think that the divine nature is not is like we sh we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, something shaped by art and man's desiring. Truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked, um, but now commands all men everywhere to repent, because He has appointed a day which He will judge the world in righteousness. By the man whom he has ordained, he has given assurance of all this by raising of, of this all by raising him from the dead. And when they heard the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, while others said, We will hear you again on this matter. So Paul departed from among them. However, men, uh, some men joined him and believed among them uh, Dionysus and the, the Aragrippite, a woman named Demarius, and others with them. And, and so... You know, the, the question sort of goes was, you know, is, is Paul is trying to preach there in Athens and he doesn't get a lot of traction. You know, he there's some that, that believe, um, but many, you know, think, oh, this guy's a quack. You know, they, they had this own thought. You know, he was he was calling in to, to contrast what some of the Greeks believed. You know, a lot of the Greeks had this thought that that they were the wiser, more superior people that, you know, their way of life was the best way and so on and so forth. And, and you know, even even to the Ro Romans that had taken over, you know, Rome just sort of adopted the Greek religion. And so they worshiped the same gods, but they just gave them different names. Um, but, you know, even when you look at the, the gods that they worshiped, they were, they were, you know, human traits, human ideas, human emotions that they, they, they gave these gods. And these, these so-called gods were, were so petty and pathetic that, that really they were just like big baby humans that were constantly causing trouble and, and, and really didn't care about the life of the people. And here's Paul and he's preaching that God who created the universe, this, this God who is who is beyond their gods, who is beyond anything that they loved the world so much they sent his son, that, that, that his son and the work that he did, he came to, to forgive and to bring people together and, and to, to give salvation, that, that you know God had proven this through raising him from the dead. And so, you know, for a lot of people, this, this seemed like craziness to them. And so there was many that mocked. And, and some, you know, were, were, okay, well, this is interesting. Let's hear you again on this. But there were some that believed. And so the question sometimes comes up, and, and, and it's debated uh, frequently, you know. Was, was Paul's miss, uh, mission there in Athens a success, or was it a failure? And, and, you know, I would strongly argue that it was a success. Because, you know, one, one soul is worth more than the whole world. You know, one life is worth saving. And so even though there might not have been a huge, you know, huge number of people that came to know the Lord, there was some. There was some. You know, when we when we look at, at college campuses today and we look at, at all these people that, that are trying to indoctrinate kids into, you know, following this humanistic thinking and, and that it's it's all about feeling and their emotions and and all this sort of stuff, and, and trying to dissuade them from any belief in God or absolute right and wrong and all this sort of stuff, you know, we, we can sort of feel like, you know, Christians are just, you know, railroaded out of there. But, but you know, even in the midst of, of some of the most uh, darkest areas in academia, you know, there's a, there are people that, that God loves and, and he died for them just as much as he loves and, and died for us. And so even if, if you, you know, we have people that go and they don't have huge numbers of people, but to have some, and the fact that everyone, you know, that we go and we, we share the good news with everyone that we can, that the whole world would hear, you know, we're not responsible for the results. We're responsible for the going and telling. And so I think what Paul did was, was incredibly successful. You know, he, here he was in the, in the midst of, of all these foreign gods, you know, this this demonic worship of these these things that was leading people astray, and Paul was not deterred. He he was not afraid to to stand up for for Jesus, and 
and some believed. And so as we think about that, you know, I think that, that he had a great success, but, you know, it had to be discouraging. Even though I, I truly believe that he had success there, that he did something amazing, and he shows that when you're dealing with people who have no sense of God, you have to go about sharing who God is in a different way. You know, he Paul had to go all the way back to this God is the God of, of creation. He's the one that gives us life. He's the one that gives us breath. Through him, everything is made. He goes all the way to the beginning. You know, there's so many times that, that you know, we, we get that, that picture of somebody going door to door and knocking on the door. Do you know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? And, you know, we get this, this view of, of somebody who's, you know, maybe wearing a shirt and glasses, you know, he, he, I have no idea. But, you know, we get this idea of, of that's what, you know, ministry is. We go knock door to door and ask. But do we actually try to go and form a relationship, find out, do they know who God is? Do they know why they need Jesus? You know, a lot of people think, oh, I'm doing the best I can. I'm a good person. You know, why do I need a Savior? Why, why do I need save from? You know, we have to show them that they need a Savior. And sometimes that's not the easiest thing to do going door to door. And, you know, people have such a, you know, there's so many people that have such a poor opinion of that, you know. and But, you know, some people have, you know, they, they have fear that, you know, I, I can't, I can't go minister somebody. I can't go knock on the door, you know, but there, there, there's the whole thing of, you know, being afraid we, we need to go, you know, we, we got to go, uh, about a little over a year ago when we were advertising a Bible school um, about two years now because of this year. Um, and, and, you know, we got to knock on the door and invite people to Bible school and, and, you know, we got to say, Hey, can we pray with you? Or, or, you know, can, you know, can we tell you about Jesus? You know, we got to go and, and, you know, we didn't, we didn't do the, the traditional thought and, you know, we didn't have a lot of response, but we did have some. And, you know, I take that some as, is a success. You know, I got to pray with a few people at their door, you know, one lady was had her son who was dealing with some drug addiction and you know in the midst of that we got to pray with her and and, and you know I think that whether or not she she ever comes to Calvary we at least got to to share with her that the Lord loves her loves her children is concerned about the problems that she's concerned about so you know as we look at this I, you know, this, this, in some respects, it had to be weighing on Paul because, you know, he's wanting to see, you know, people come to know the Lord and he's seen some, but, but I wonder if he ever felt like it was enough. If, you know, he, you know, he was getting the job done, he was being faithful, or if he, if he felt like, man, if I just had a little more time, if I, if I just said this different, if I just did this different, because, you know, that going and sharing is so important. And, you know, today we have to look at how we we do that, how we go about that. You know, I love to be able to spend time with people and, and develop a relationship with them and find out what's going on in their life and, and be able to speak God's truth into their situation. But, you know, sometimes it takes time to do that, to build that trust, to be able to, to share with somebody. And, you know, you might be asking yourself, you know, with, with, with the, the massive amount of people that need to know about Jesus, are we, are we using our time wisely? Are we doing things? We, and, and, you know, one soul is worth the entire world. I truly believe that. And so we have to say, you know, Lord, we're, we're doing the best we can. And so take every opportunity. Develop those relationships where you have the opportunity to develop them. Say that, that quick thing. Give them, give somebody a, a quick piece of God's love, if you can, with somebody, you know, whether it's on an elevator, whether it's, it's, you know, out in town, whether you're, you see somebody stuck on the side of the road and you stop and help them and help them change a tire or something, you know, give them a little bit of, of the Lord, wherever you can, however you can. But I want us to continue on just a little bit into chapter 18. And I want us to read through, and we're going to read through verse one through eight. And it says, after these things, so after after Paul was there in, in Athens, 
Uh, it says, After these things, Paul departed from Athens and went to Corinth, and he found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in, in Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome. And he came to them, so it was beca uh, so because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them and worked. For by uh, occupation they were tent makers, and he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded both Jew and Greek. And when Silas and Timothy had come from Macedonia, Paul was compelled by the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus is the Christ. But when they, they had opposed him and blasphemed, he shook his garment and said to them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean. From now on I will go, uh, will go to the Gentiles. And he departed from there and entered the house of a certain man named Justice, who, who, uh, Justice, one who worshipped God, whose house was next door to the synagogue. Then Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with, his, uh, with all his household, and many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized. And so, you know, Paul is, is out there and he's preaching to the Corinthians and, and Corinth, and he, he gets to meet Priscilla and Aquila, um, and, and, you know, he's, he's making tents with them cause that's, that's what he was trained to do. And so he was, he was trying not to be a burden on the people there and he was trying to, you know, earn what he needed to, to survive. And, and the people started, you know, rising up again and we see Paul's frustration. He, he shook out his garment. This was, this was basically the same as saying he's washing his hands of it. He said, you know, I, I have... I have been faithful. I've come to you with the truth. I've preached the truth and you reject it. I am not responsible for you any longer. And so he shook off his, his garment. You know, he said to them, you know, that he was he was going to go to the Gentiles. And he departed from there. And, and he didn't go far. In fact, he went right next door to the synagogue to, to a man named uh, uh, Titus Just... Uh, what was it? Uh, Titus... Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see uh, justice, uh, which is which is Titus, uh, one who worshipped God, who was next door to the synagogue, and then Crispus, uh, the ruler of the synagogue, believed in the Lord with his whole house. So the ruler of the synagogue seen this, and and him as in whole family came to to know the Lord, and so many people came and they they saw. But you know, I love this in the midst of, of Paul's frustration. When he was getting upset with, with constantly the same thing, the Jews get upset and they try to kick him out and stuff. God encourages Paul, and you know, this is this is amazing. I want us to take a look at this first, starting in verse nine. It says, "Now the Lord spoke to Paul in 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 the night by a vision: Do not be afraid, but speak, and do not keep silent, for I am with you, and no one will attack you to hurt you, for I have many people in this city." And he continued there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. And so in the midst of his frustration, in the midst of, of when he was, he was in a dark spot, he, was, he had to be, and he had to just continually be building. And you know, even as I, as I shared that quote with, with Billy Graham uh, earlier this morning, you know, you think about, you know, these people who have been constantly sharing the gospel, sharing the good news, sharing, sharing, sharing. And even though we would see that, yes, they're being very successful, you know, discouragement can can come into any of our hearts. It's something that we, we deal with. And, you know, even myself is, is pastor. I, I become discouraged sometimes. You know, I'll see something and it will just, it will hit me hard. And I'll be like, man. Lord, am I doing this right? And you know, it's at those times that sometimes the Lord speaks in my life. Now, now Jesus, you know, he spoke directly. He, the Lord spoke directly to Paul in a vision, and he encouraged him to keep sharing, keep telling the truth. Don't, don't be silent. I'm with you. You are safe. I wonder how many times that that, that flashed into Paul's eyes, you know, here, here's somebody who is willing to put his life on the line for the Lord, but I mean, to constantly have people after you, to con you know, to to have been stoned and left for dead. I mean, this stuff has to be there. Paul is still a human being, and so you know, we see that God encourages him himself. And so, you know, what what a what an awesome thing that is that 
you know, to be encouraged by the Lord that he's, he's, he's going to be okay. And so, so we see, you know, Paul renew his energy. He stays there a year and six months, has a, a huge uh, ministry there in Corinth, ends up writing two letters to the Corinthians later on, and, and they are such massively important letters to, to Christians as a whole, um, First and Second Corinthians. And so, you know, what, what an awesome thing in the ministry that, that Paul had there. But, you know, as I, as I think about this, you know, we can all fall into that trap of getting discouraged. I mean, even when we're working our best, when we're doing our best, when we're sharing with people, we're inviting them to church, we, you know, we're trying to share those tidbits. You know, maybe we're speaking into our friends' lives and we're trying to encourage them and and they're still not listening. And we go, Lord, am I, am I doing this right? Am I, is, is, is there anything worthwhile here? And, you know, as I said, we need to be faithful to the calling. We, we don't need to be discouraged when enemies come and oppose us and where it doesn't seem like anyone's listening. We've been called to be faithful to share the message. And so we trust God even when we don't understand. You know, we continue to do, even when we think that we're not getting anywhere, we continue to be faithful. And it says that God rewards that. But he also gives us a promise. And I love this promise. And this is one that, that we can hold on to. And so turn with me if you would. Let's go back to the Old Testament. Um, we're going to be in Isaiah, and we're going to be in, in chapter 55. Isaiah 55. And, and I think this is a promise that we can hold on to, even in the midst of, of sharing God's Word, and we feel like maybe we're not getting anywhere. We feel like that hamster in the, the, the hamster wheel, that we're just spinning our wheels. We're going around in circles. But this is what God says. It says, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall and it shall prosper in the thing in which I sent it. You know, we've been called to go and be witnesses. And as we go and we share, you know, the word that we share, God, God will not let that come back void. So whether it's, it's going to be a seed that's planted, whether it's going to, you know, be the, the accusation that, that when when they get to the other side, well, no one told me. Yes, they did. I remember on this date, such and so told you about me and you, you scoffed it off. You know, our job is to be the messengers, to go and to tell. God's Holy Spirit is the one that works on people's hearts. So it's, it's not, we, we don't save anybody. So in the midst of when we think that, you know, maybe we're not getting anywhere, that, you know, things aren't happening fast enough, things aren't going fast enough, we need to hold on to the fact that, that if we're being faithful, if we're doing what God has asked us to do, if we are going to the work, then we are doing what the Lord would have us to do. And, and we, will be, we will be rewarded for being faithful. And so I want to encourage you, if you're, if you're struggling, you know, you're going, hey, you know, we've been talking about, you know, the, the, you know, who's your one this year and who are we going to share the God's word with? Maybe you've been trying to share and you've not been getting anywhere. Maybe you've been sharing and, and you've been, it's been going really slow. Maybe, you know, you see little glimmers of hope, but it's just like, it's such a slog, such a struggle. I want to encourage you. It's worth it. It's worth it for the little things. Because we never know what 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 thing the Lord is going to use. You know, there's been so many times that, that I was preaching a sermon. And, you know, I, I thought this is the message that the Lord would have me give. And here's all the points that I need to make. And and there'll be somebody that, that stops me and talks to me after the service. And they say, you know, thank you for preaching such and so. And, and the Lord was really talking to me about, and it would be something completely unrelated or I would think it was unrelated something completely different and I'm like Lord I'm glad you showed up because you took what I had and you 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 let it speak to wherever situation they were in and you know that's that's what we need to hold to the to the fact of that if we're faithful to the mission if we're faithful to going and telling God brings the increase 
And sometimes when we don't think that we've been successful, you never know what happens afterwards. You know, we had a, a, a young boy uh, when I was back in Cincinnati that we spent a lot of time with. Uh, we loved this kid. He was, he, he you know, ended up uh, being sort of one of the, the kids that, that came in off the, the street and, and, you know, really didn't have any connection to the church and all this. And, and Veronica and I loved him and we, we spent time with him. And, and you know, it seemed like he was sort of drifting away. Um, and then, you know, Veronica and I were, were called up here and stuff. And it was funny as I went back to Cincinnati uh, for a visit last year. I got to hear from one of the, the youth that I spent a lot of time with and and I knew, you know, was solid in the Lord. And, and he told me, you know, that, that kid, me and him are still friends and, and he he's loves the Lord and he's he's still solid. Me and him still hang out. And we do things. And, and it was such an uplifting thing to know that even though I didn't see the end result that that the Lord maybe took something that I said or or caught him in a completely different way, but but somebody that you know I, I had a heart for the Lord had had taken care of. And so I encourage you, if you have somebody that's on your heart or your mind that you've been praying for, that you've been wanting to see come to know the Lord, and maybe you just feel like you're not getting anywhere, keep praying. Keep asking the Lord to send somebody in their life. Because I think the Lord honors when we continually bring someone up because they're on our heart. God puts them there for a reason. And you know, it might be, it might take weeks, months, years, decades. Don't give up hope. If they're still alive, there's still hope. And so keep praying. Keep trying. Keep seeking what the Lord would have you do. And don't let discouragement creep in because we're, we need to be faithful to the calling. Not necessary. We're not responsible for the outcome as long as we're faithful to doing what the Lord has asked us to do. Well, thank you so much for listening today. I hope that you have a great week. Have a great Labor Day weekend. Enjoy your day off if you get one. Um, and then we will see you this next week. Thank you so much. God bless you.